Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Ethan Drew, and we're going to be doing another episode of the Vocast today. I believe this is going to be episode 16 or 17 with Jordan. Uh, he is a TikTok personality who is qu quickly gaining traction on the app, primarily for his meme-related music content, but he also does other music content as well. Jordan, say hey to the audience. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Jordan. I usually just post TikToks of me adding choirs or bass, or I just, like Ethan said, meme post, adding harmonies to weird videos or changing up the lyrics to songs and posting them. Yeah. Yep. And uh, we are excited to have him with us today. So, guys, if you are enjoying the content on the channel and you're looking forward to hear your Jordan's story and how he got into music, make sure you drop a like, drop a comment down below. It helps with the algorithm. And if you want to keep these podcasts coming with people from TikTok, other singers on YouTube, out there in the music world, make sure that you take a look at my Patreon. That is the best way to support the channel by far. You can support me as little as $1 a month if you choose to be that generous. Not required to enjoy the content on the channel by any means. Subscribers, you guys also help out a lot in this case. Make sure you hit the bell and you'll be notified whenever I drop another video. With that said, we are going to jump promptly into our podcast today with Jordan. Like I said, if you guys are excited, hit the like button. And Jordan, you ready for this? Get to hammer, get hammered with some questions. Yes, sir. I'm ready. All right. So we're going to start off with the first question first traditional question of the podcast what is your favorite or preferred drink usually it varies but lately i've been craving just sweet tea it's just been it's been my holy grail i love sweet tea with every fiber of my being so are you I, I don't know if i ever clarified this so guys jordan is a decent friend of mine i don't actually know what part of the u.s he lives in do you live in the south north or like midwest yeah, I live down in Texas. Okay, yeah. I was going to say, uh, you had to be been in a state somewhere where they would have sweet tea. Mm -hmm. The best sweet tea. Some people that live over here in North Carolina would probably uh, beg to differ, but... <laughs> I'll battle it out. Battle it out for sure. I, oh, yeah. norm I normally have my ginger ale, but... I I committed a sin and I ran out of my favorite ginger ale for the podcast. <sighs> Atrocious. I know. I usually, I, I usually I'm drinking something, but I'm here to promote healthy vocals. So we're drinking water today. Yep. Guys, I'm not necessarily promoting that you drink Gatorade, but this is what I am drinking today. Gatorade Zero uh, Glacier Cherry. It's like the best flavor, though. It's a good choice. It's a really good one, in my personal opinion. I've not had a whole lot of water today, and I did kind of get a pretty good workout earlier, so. It's okay. Works this is my first bottle. Your first bottle? Shame. Mm -hmm. Shame. All right, so we are about to dive into the more music-related questions of the podcast. So the first one is going to be, what or who got you into music? So take as much time as you need to answer that. Very broad question. Um, I've got multiple people in my life who have influenced music in my life. Um, ever since I was young, my dad has been doing little gigs in bars and that shows, you know, working away, working his way around. Yeah. And I would perform with him sometimes when I was really little. I would just go up on stage and strum his guitar like a lunatic. I don't know what I, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, but I feel like that helped like get me into music and then later on in life well not later on throughout throughout my life i just sang i wasn't like doing it for choirs or anything i was just singing for personal enjoyment it was just my my thing um i got to middle school and my mom convinced me to join the middle school band she played clarinet throughout middle school and high school so i'm like okay my mom can do this, so can I. And she genuinely had fun with it. I was like, you know what? I wanted to give it a shot. Um, yeah. I, so I played French horn. And <laughs> mm -hmm, French horn. And <laughs> I, was, I was first chair all three years. And then 
just one day I decided this is not for me. I then from there on, I started pursuing vocal music. I joined my high school choir. Um, you know, I started TikTok. I met amazing people. Um, it really helped like with my social skills and everything. I've never met more amazing people and it's really just helped my music like knowledge, uh, just, you know, grow bigger. I learn things from new people every single day. I first discovered bass singing actually in middle school when I was in seventh grade, I believe. Um, and I feel like Jeff Castellucci, Tim Faust, Luke Taylor, Avi Kaplan all like turned me in the direction of joining the high school choir and exploring the low, exploring like my lower register because I heard, I, I remember it was Tim Faust hitting the low G1 in Ring of Fire. Yeah. And I was like, that sounds like a growl. <laughs> so I did it. And I was like, wait, I've been doing this like my whole life for no dang reason. <laughs> like, I already know what I'm doing. This could be, this could turn into something. Right. So I started exploring, you know, the other acapella bases and just acapella music in general. And, you know, I listened to Pentatonix growing up. It was my, it's my mom's favorite acapella group. Yeah. So I already knew what acapella music kind of was. I just didn't know that there was bases in that. Or yeah. low notes. I didn't even know that singing below like a C3 was a thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I discovered that and it was a life changer. Like I, I heard a D2 and I was like, mm, wait, I have that. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it just went on from there. It, I practiced for, I say, a year or two before I started going public with it. I made my first TikTok account. And added bass to a good friend of mine's uh singing video and it did fairly well and i feel like that got me started on tiktok because it got me my first 50 followers and then the more followers i gained the more it motivated me to keep posting and then the more i kept posting the more i figured out like what people want to hear and how to like work around the algorithm to make sure other people can hear this too yeah and for those that don't know, the TikTok algorithm is very different from the YouTube algorithm. Oh, and yeah. the TikTok algorithm is very, very ornery. It makes no sense sometimes. You get you could post one video at the you could post one video at one PM one day and then post another video at the exact same time the next day. And there could be a, a, you know a fifteen million view difference. Yeah. It's just <laughs> <laughs> half the time it's luck and then half the time it's just are you actually good like do we <laughs> want to put this out right yeah but sometimes for me it's more of just well in my case it's always the videos that i put the least effort into that blow up the most <laughs> like yeah the uh my most viral video uh i think it's up to 2.7 million likes or something i put maybe 20 minutes of effort into that <laughs> yeah and then i have i have tiktoks where i put a month worth of effort into and it's gotten maybe five thousand views yeah but yeah, i'm so grateful for it but still yeah, yeah it's it's just it's the algorithm is just like it's very weird to say the least yes i can't make much sense out of it yet and if he can't make much sense out of it and he's been on the platform for a while you know who who's going to make sense out of it at that point <laughs> exactly so even some of the more popular ones don't understand it yeah <laughs> yeah so um who were some of the most influential figures both in your life as well as your musical career uh hmm. once again i'd probably have to say my parents you know they've guided me along this path even if they didn't you know fully support me joining the high school choir in the beginning they still supported it in the end and it got me to where i'm wanting or it got me to where i am today and a little secret for those that don't know i originally was not allowed to have tiktok 
I posted videos on it anyways, because I'm a, I'm a 14 year old rebel who cares. <laughs> um, but yeah, my mom discovered it and she was like, you you're doing fairly well on these videos. If it's something that you enjoy, I don't see why we should take it away from you, especially if it's something you could possibly make a career out of in the future. Yeah. And I think, I think that moment in my life is something I am most grateful for ever, like all time. Absolutely. Um, I'd have another one would probably be my middle school band director because he, he knew I had a thing for singing. He, he knew in the end that band wouldn't be my thing. And he gave, he taught me like a lot of life lessons that I still remember to this day. Um, you know, he, he, he encouraged me to pursue what I wanted to pursue, even if it wasn't, you know, playing French horn. Yeah. But yeah. And then of course I've got my TikTok friends, you know, Nelson, Davide, Manav, Luke Taylor, Bobby Bass, all of them. They see, I see them post and I'm like, wow, I forgot I can do that. That makes me want to post again. You know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And of course we're, we're personal, like we're all pretty much all of us for personal friends. We're not just talk, we don't talk about music 24 yeah. seven. We, we, some, we have deep conversations, you know, and, um, you know, things can get personal but that's okay because we're all friends, you know, yeah. the TikTok singing community is more than just a singing community. It's an actual community community. Yeah. Everybody 100%. knows everybody. hundred percent. Definitely a privilege to be a part of it for us both. Yes, of course. What is something that one of these influential figures has said to you that stuck with you your entire life? Hmm. I was actually talking to Luke Taylor last night. And typically when people... Like they start getting traction and followers. Sometimes their ego can get to them and they think that they're too good for other people. Mm -hmm. And Luke, me and Luke Taylor, there's about a 3.2 million, million follower difference between us. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, I, I talk formally when I talk to bigger creators, you know, I don't, I don't try to use slang. I try to sound formal. Yeah. And he started using slang and I was like, I was like, you're pretty cool if you use slang. He's like, yeah, man, I'm just a regular guy. I just happen <laughs> to have a lot of followers. And, and you know, it's, it's simple, honestly, but it's true. No matter how many followers you have, you could have one follower, you could have a hundred million followers. You're just still a person. Yeah. You just happen, yeah. You just happen to have a lot of people who look up to you. And I feel yeah. like that should be more of a reason that you interact with your community more. You can, yeah. You can, like, you know, just, you can start the next Luke Taylor, if you know Absolutely. what I mean. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. All it takes is one sentence. All it takes is one. And it's it's pretty cool, too. I can, I can attest to what Jordan's saying here, because Luke Taylor is, without a doubt, one of the most down-to-earth people I know. And, oh, yeah. you like... Being able to talk to him, I don't get to talk to him that often, but I, I am in personal contact with him also, and he's a really, really cool down-to-earth dude. And Absolutely. it's it's really, really cool to see someone that doesn't have their ego go through to their head once they start gaining traction and success. Yeah. I feel, I feel like that's a really big problem, you know, and most, and like every, any famous person, like, you know, you have the good people that interact with the community, like Tony Hawk. You know, he likes to he likes to joke around in Twitter comments. Mm -hmm. um, and then you've got I don't know I don't I don't really know who would, who would be a good example without calling anybody out. Then you have the people that just don't interact with their community at all because mm -hmm. they yeah because they think they're too good or too rich or something. Yeah, and that's Whatever something else too. Head. Something else too is like the people that have the biggest egos. They're not. They either don't recognize it or they think they're too good to have an ego. Yeah. That's, that's, that's pretty fair. Yeah. But I've, but I will say in, in my recent growth and rise into the music industry and the podcast industry is how welcoming people truly have been and how nice they truly are down to earth. They are. Yeah. 
And I'm like, <laughs> it's it's great because I can I can sit here and I talk to people who have pretty big followings and I get to call them personal friends of mine. It's awesome. Right. Yeah. I, I feel like one of the main reasons I stayed in the singing community was because everybody was welcoming and they didn't, you know, they didn't hate on you. If you weren't good enough, they would give you tips and they would try and they would try their best to help you. And in, in the end, it always worked. Yeah. So like if you were to compare a video from today compared to my first video, so much has changed. And I wouldn't, I, I would be lying if I said that I learned all of my music skills and all my knowledge from myself. I've learned from a bunch of different people around the world. Absolutely. I can relate to that a hundred percent. I can guarantee you that not all of my knowledge came from my high school band director or church choir directors right. or stuff like that. Like I've learned from a lot of people in a lot of places. Yeah. Even, if, even people I don't, I don't, even people I don't personally know. Like I listen to, I'm a big Jacob Collier fan. Love music theory. That's why sometimes I get a little crazy with my chords and arrangements and stuff. But mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's fun. It sounds good. It makes it fun. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, if you got the knowledge, you're going to want to show it off just a little bit. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So um, for those that don't know, do you play any instruments? I Other play than a few. So you play guitar. I've seen you do several videos with that. Yeah, I got a guitar right over there. You probably can't see it, but I got one behind me. I got three on the wall over there. I got two in Mississippi, one at my dad's house. I've got my piano right here. Okay. Of course, I played the French horn. Yeah. Um, I have a kalimba, a melodica. I have a harmonica. I don't know if a kazoo counts as an instrument, but I can play it. <laughs> hey, hey, it counts, I guess. <laughs> I got a slide whistle. I've probably got a bunch of weird other instruments I forgot that I have. <laughs> I, I think I have an I think I have a dollar store ocarina in the backseat of my dad's car somewhere. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't I don't keep track of my instruments. I just hey, I forgot I had that. <laughs> just play it. <laughs> I have a, I have a bunch of these. Oh, there's one. Oh, there's another. There's one. Oh, I haven't seen that one in like five years. There it is. <laughs> I'm going to go play that for a minute real quick. Yeah, and then forget about it for the next two years. <laughs> yeah. I can relate to yeah. that. So, yeah. um, how long have you been playing each each of the instruments that you listed? And if you don't remember, you can just say, I'm not sure. The other, like, miscellaneous instruments, I don't, I'm not going to really count because I hardly play those. Yeah. Nor am I any good on them. Um, a piano i've been i've been fiddling around with it since i was maybe 13. i remember i got a piano for christmas one year it was actually this piano right here okay um, yeah and i've i've just been in love with it ever since and my dad taught me the basics on guitar when i was about the same age i think it was maybe that summer after the christmas Okay. He, yeah, he taught me the basic chords and all of that. And then from there, I just kind of started teaching myself all these weird, crazy things. Not any good on guitar, but I play chords and stuff. <laughs> but yeah, he taught me a song or two. And then I just kind of taught myself how to navigate the guitar from there. Um, I never really had any lessons or anything. Never had a single vocal lesson in my life. I had the French horn, played that for three years. Of course, I got lessons from my band director and all that, yep. uh, private tutors. But piano, guitar, never taken a lesson for. I've always tried to be, in the, I'm an independent person, so I like to try and figure things out on my own. Yeah. Without, you know, without the help of it, any other person. Because in my mind, it makes me feel more mature and more adultish, which is what I try and go for. I like to seem older than my age. Yeah. But yeah, I've you, taught myself everything pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. pretty much the same boat. I don't mind learning from other people, but I'm, yeah. Yeah, and I try to like, I try to get a hold of it myself first, at least. Yeah. If I want to learn I, something. Yeah. I can always go on TikTok and look up a tutorial or something, but I'm not going to try and learn it on my own first. When in doubt, TikTok has a video for it. Exactly. Anything you need is on TikTok. <clears throat> TikTok or YouTube. Yeah, you can even shop on TikTok now. Yeah, you can do that. 
<laughs> it's, it's just because it's becoming like just this crazy thing. It's yeah. not just a, not just a, like a lip syncing app or anymore, or a Charlie Emilio hitting, you know, the whoa app or whatever she does, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's got its subsections and, um, I'm lucky enough to be a part of the music. Subsection. Oh, absolutely. I remember back when it was musically and I remember when you could only oh, do yeah. videos, you, you had no text, you couldn't put any text on it. You could yeah. only have music and there was like, and you could, you used to be able to upload your own music into it and use yeah. that as an audio. That I was remember sick. those days. I, I remember the moment I figured out that they changed it from musically. Um, mm-hmm. I was sitting at my kitchen table at my old house. I was playing Roblox <laughs> and I was, I was playing Roblox and I was like, I'm bored of this. I want to go on musically. And so I went to the search bar on my laptop and I couldn't find it anywhere. I started, I started freaking out because I was like, this is like my whole life. I don't know what to do outside of musically. If I don't have musically, what am I going to do with all the spare time I've got? Yeah. And then I I took to the internet and I was like, they changed it to TikTok. What does that even mean? (laughs) They're going to keep the logo, but change the name. That makes no sense. (laughs) Yeah. It didn't make sense to me. It was just so random. No, I didn't have any warning or anything. But there are a lot of things that came with like with the change afterwards Mm -hmm. that like truly made the app blossom into what it is now. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, And, you know, it started off like musically ended. There was always just the the dancing videos or the occasionally posted Vine or the lip syncing videos. But then people were like, wait, we don't have to do that. We can just like be ourselves and post Mm -hmm. it. Yeah. (laughs) And. And I feel like when people started realizing that, that's when TikTok finally blew up, blew up worldwide. Yeah. Because, because people wanted to get themselves out there and they wanted, they wanted the fame and they wanted, you know, people to see and listen to their talents and their stories. Yeah. And even if, even if TikTok has had its things in the past with only legalities and stuff, I I feel like TikTok is going to be home for a lot of people especially small content creators. Definitely. hundred percent. Obviously it had its legal troubles for sure, but we overall, I think it's in a really good spot and it's only going up at this point. Yeah. I mean, if if they threaten to get, if they threaten to ban it again, it'll only be like, what the seventh time they threaten to do it. They're not going to go through with it. And I'm pretty pretty confident in that. Probably not. And like most of us that are on TikTok at this point, even if it did happen, most of us will have other avenues for getting our content out. Right. I should probably start posting on other things. We have Instagram Reels, Facebook Reels, um, YouTube Shorts. YouTube Shorts. YouTube Shorts is picking up a lot of traction. Mm-hmm. That's because uh, you, YouTube Shorts it doesn't require you to be a certain age to make any money. You can be. You can be two years old and make a viral YouTube short and you can make money from it. Whereas TikTok, you have to be 18 and you have to prove that you're over 18 before you can even get verified, let alone make any money. Yeah. And I can I can attest to this because I am able to monetize my content. Guys, the the YouTube uh, YouTube system, just the requirements to be able to monetize your videos if you want to become a content creator is 1000 subscribers and 4000 watch hours on your videos. So that's across the board when it comes to regular videos or YouTube shorts. Yeah. And I don't have that though. Yeah. Um, so for those that don't know, um, Jordan, tell them, um, you are under the age of 18. I am under the age of 18. I am 16 years old. Yeah. And for those that didn't know, Yes, he does look like he's my age, but he oh, is shut. is he is ten years younger than me, almost. You're twenty six. I, I didn't know that. I'm twenty five. I just turned twenty five in oct- er, a couple weeks ago. Oh, happy late birthday! Thank you. But yes, yeah, as far as um, but yeah, he, like TikTok is a little more stringent on their ability to monetize content for sure. Yeah, but that's probably because they want to avoid as much legal trouble as possible, considering yeah. all the past legal trouble. And that's understandable. Yeah, that would make sense uh, in that case. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm not, I'm not posting on TikTok for the money. I'm posting it because it's what I enjoy. That much is evident because he just keeps on doing it every single day and is pretty much carefree to that anyway. I've talked with him off camera before, and it's 
I can validate for sure that he's not in it for the money, but would love to be able to turn it into a career for sure. Absolutely. Well, maybe one day I'll get signed onto a record label, but you know, TikTok, as far as TikTok goes, I'm just doing it because I can. You because you can, and because it's fun. No matter how much hate I get, I'm never going to stop posting. That's that's the drive that that we all aspire to have. Just got to keep sure. moving forward. Yeah. Because in the end, all it is is just a comment on a TikTok video. You don't know what they look like. They don't know you. You don't know them. That's the best part about it is like if you've got someone that hates. If anything, like I, I'm going to go off on a tangent here just real quick. I love when people hate or spread or like or talk bad about you to your face because I use or at least for me because I like to turn it around and use it as a reason to keep going like it it, it fuels me so not only yeah. do I I don't respond to people that hate I don't respond to people that are rude and throw insults and stuff but instead of like I not only do I not respond to them I read what they say. I del I dive into what they said, why they might have said it, and I'm like, okay, that means this, and I take whatever this means, and I'm like, okay, I can apply this to my life and make my life better this way. Exactly. You, you can be do like, it out of spite. you do it out of spite. That's my favorite part about people that hate. You guys are awesome because you make my content better. So, Ooh. salute to you guys. But anyway, <laughs> much love to the people who love the content. Of course. All the same. Love everybody, regardless. Haters make my content better. L people that love my content make my content better. And haters, keep commenting. It gives us more video traction. Yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. But all of that aside, though, can definitely agree 100%. Yeah. Um, so usually when I get hate comments, it's just... I joke around when I respond to them. I, I like, I, I try and be funny, you know, sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't, but I, I don't, I don't take anything to heart. Yeah. And plus it's, it's, it goes back to what you said. It's, it's the internet. Yeah. It, you can't, it's hard to, well, at least for me, I find it difficult to get mad at, at something that someone says over the internet because they probably don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. They probably yeah. don't care what they're talking about and they probably don't know who you are and they don't care who you are. Exactly. So and then in the end you know relevant. they probably in the end you know they probably wouldn't say it to your face. So most likely. Most likely. Yeah. So at the end of the day, it's all a moot point. Exactly. But yeah. That was a bit of a tangent on uh hate comments and such, but it's a fun topic. Always a fun topic. Always a fun topic. Absolutely. So back on track a little bit here. So um, what are some things that people may not know about you? So you have your online life. So what are some things that people might not know about you that you've not shared with them the internet before? Um, hmm. I, I play a lot of video games, to be honest. If I'm not making a TikTok, I'm probably on a video game. Um, I, I had my... I had my phase where I didn't, you know, play video games for a while. And during that phase, you know, I was, a sh I collected shoes. Like I got some right here, you know, I collect Jordans and all that. I know this is, this is a, like a bad example, but I, I would collect, you know, sneakers and then I would resell them. Cause that was my thing for a little bit. I had my, I think every kid has their phase where all they can think about is just hustling and making money. Uh huh. Can definitely yeah. relate to that. That's how I made my money. I would sell, I'd buy shoes for retail price and then I'd resell them and make a couple hundred dollars in profit. And there you go. That's the way to do it. If you're going to yeah. sell shoes, that's the way to do it. Yeah. People um, have, I was just, I will just say real quick for those that need some extra money and you are fairly handy at like cleaning and like repairing, making very minor repairs. Reselling is a fantastic way to make a little bit of extra side cash. Absolutely, because you 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 can honestly just repair shoes with household items. Like if you have a torn piece of leather on a shoe, super glue it back together. Mm -hmm. They'll they won't be able to know unless you're like sending it to a professional. But still, it's <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's 
it's the quality of what it looks like, not the actual quality in the end. Because yeah. in, in the end, most shoe, most <laughs> actual shoe collectors don't wear their shoes. They're just in a box. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. So, yeah. What that's, are some, that's how I. That's how I knew what, that. What's some other things that people might not know about you? Um, I, I don't like to. I like to stay humble. Not that's not that's not the thing I'm saying. I like to stay humble, but I, I work two jobs. I try my best to, uh, you know, make money. Um, I like. I have a big work ethic when it comes to something. I know I'm going to get a reward out of, uh, yeah. especially if that's money. Um, I'm also not a really big people person. That might, that might be shocking considering I, I talk to people all day, every day, but I'm really not a people person. More I, of an I like introvert. To, yeah. I, I like to be, oh, I like my moments where I'm just like alone. You know, sometimes I'll, wake up at three in the morning just to have a couple hours to myself before I have to do anything big that day. And, you know, it's just, it's honestly kind of calming. It gives me a chance to, you know, plan out my day, get an actual schedule going, make sure I eat breakfast sometimes. Cause I, I don't like to eat breakfast. Yeah. I don't eat. Um, I'm right there with you. Yeah. I, don't, I can't stand sweet things first thing in the morning. It's just that doesn't, doesn't sit well. <clears throat> Yeah, plus I'm like, I'm in like this fitness cutting phase where I'm dropping some weight and bre breakfast for me was always a way for me to take in a crap ton of calories. So I'm like, at this point, I'm I'm at it like I stopped eating breakfast for a while and then it just kind of it just kept on with the rest of my life. I don't really do anything yeah. except drink a cup of coffee. Coffee is always good in the mornings. Uh, that's actually another thing a lot of people don't know about. I... I work out. I, I know it doesn't look like it. I'm I'm scrawny, but I, <laughs> that's that's because I'm I try and stay lean. I, I have I have the strength. I just don't have the physique. Fair. I just I don't like to you know be flashy. I I guess I just I, I work out my free time. I, I stay in shape, even though I eat really unhealthy and sporadically and have binge eats. I just I always try and work. I always try and do my best to work off the calories. And, you know, do a couple push-ups every now and then do, I have weeks where I'll just work out every single night. Um, yeah, I, I try and stay fit. I like, I like being healthy. Oh yeah, me too. I mean, and sometimes like it's, and it's totally fine to have like some of those unhealthy foods just don't take in too much. And yeah. I'm just like, yeah. And it's, if, if you just watch it, then you're usually fine. Yeah. You always got to have a cheat day every now and then. Yeah. Gotta, gotta. You got to do that. Otherwise you'll just drive yourself nuts. Yeah. That's, that's a big thing when it comes to working out, you don't want to count calories because that can really mess with your, men your mental health and it can make you really insecure because in the end, there's always going to be an Instagram model or somebody who's going to look better than you. Yep. But at the same time, you also have to think about what are they like mentally? Are they miserable or are they happy, you know, counting calories and not enjoying food? Mm-hmm it's like, it's yeah. a very lopsided relationship love hate relationship yeah. with food at that point if you're doing that yeah i had but, my face where i did that that's that also applies to a lot of other areas in life too like make sure you don't take to don't do too much of one thing or too much of everything or you'll drive yourself insane you got to do it in moderation Moderation is key in all that we do, but especially so in several other areas in life, such as fitness, uh, dieting, um, working. <laughs> That's a I mean, big one. Yeah. Even doing something as simple as posting on TikTok. I mean, for a while, um, it was like last year, I tried to post something every single day. And by the end of the year, I was just mentally drained. And I was like, no, that's not going to work out. I've got to do things on my own schedule. But, you know, I've got to I got to actually put time and effort into it without rushing. So, yeah, I, I make a post every couple of days, but I'm not working on it. I'm not working on music that full four days. I take maybe a day or two just to do my own thing, play video games, of course. Um, and then I might spend the next two days working on a music project or 15 minutes every day of that little period and just work on it a little bit. Yeah. 
yeah, I, I can't post every day. It, it really affects your mental health. And you, and you might be thinking, you might be thinking to yourself, oh, I can do that. I can do that. Don't. No, don't. No. Don't. First of all, if you think you can, you can't. Number two, don't. Yes. Don't you even will, try. You will drive yourself insane. I speak from experience. I went through a YouTube. I went through a sprint of videos. I'm not sure if you were watching on these or not, but I went through a sprint of like two weeks where I uploaded a video or short every day for two weeks. It was either a short or a YouTube video for two weeks, once a day. And there was a couple that two or three days where I actually did a video and a short or two in one day. And I speak from experience when I say burnt out, burnout set in very quickly. Yeah. And then the more you get burnt out, the less interested you get into the thing. And I was like, if I keep doing this, I'm going to stop liking the thing that keeps me going, you know? Exactly. And you never want my entire life. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. We definitely don't want to burn yourself out on the one thing that keeps you going every day. Of course not. Oh, bit of another tangent there, but, um, so, uh, what are some of the things that you do in your off time when you're not, uh, singing, recording, et cetera? So you mentioned you play video games. Is there much of anything else that you do? Other than uh, video games? I play, work? I play the video games. I work. Um, I like to spend time with my brothers. I have three brothers. All, they all want attention. I'm the oldest. They all look up to me, so I try and spend time with them so they don't feel like I'm an absent older brother. Yeah. Yeah. Um, usually, I'm just, you know, talking with friends. I I try and – occasionally, I'll try and help people out, you know, but there's only so much that you can do from a house. You know, I, mm-hmm. I, I, don't, I don't go out too often. Never, never really been to a party, never done drugs or anything like that. I just – I stay home. I'm a good kid. Yeah. And I was kind of in the same boat too when I was growing up. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing's wrong with it at all. What I've kind of seen... video games do you play? Oh. Um, uh, I'm really big on cars and car games in general. So if it's a racing game, I play it. And then, of course, I play your basics Rainbow Six Siege, Fortnite. Of course, I play Fortnite. Um, you know, Minecraft. And of course I have, you know, the phases where I'll download a random game, play it for two or three days and then just uninstall it. Yeah. I, I've done yeah. that before. Yeah. But yeah, that's pretty much what I do in my free time. I just, I'm either talking to friends, uh, trying to be a good older brother, um, or I'm playing video games. A hundred percent. And there's a, yeah, there's a whole lot worse things you could be doing. Oh yeah, especially especially in today's world. Yes, I know. I know people way younger than me getting involved with way too much stuff that they don't need to be getting involved in. And that is, and that was mentioned very broadly for a reason because things have gotten really bad in multiple areas, and we'll just leave it as a general statement. We'll leave it at that. Yeah. Uh. So I mean. People could people could be getting involved in much worse things, but at this point, yeah. video games have have become a very good thing for people to spend their time on, so long as it is in moderation. It goes back to what yeah. you were saying earlier. <laughs> Don't get addicted. Don't forget to do your chores. That that turns that that can be pretty bad too. Don't forget to do your chores. Do your chores, kids. Do what your mom tells you. She knows best. Yeah. Everything. Every, look at it this way. You came from her. You're just a smaller version of her. Exactly. Everything that you're going to do, she's probably already done. Most likely. Most likely. Yeah. I I used to live by that statement pretty much. There's a lot of qualities that I carry from my mom, and I was like, I'm a spitting image of her in a lot of ways. Yeah. So, I mean, definitely relate there. Yeah. Um, Wish I would have done more chores as a kid, 100%, but... <laughs> I don't do my chores. It's okay. You know, do as I say, not as I do. (laughs) I I know what I'm talking about. Just don't, don't do it like I do it, which is not at all. (laughs) (laughs) Done that before. Let's see. So, um, 
back to music here. Uh, how often do you practice singing throughout the week, and how long do you typically practice for? I wouldn't say it's. I wouldn't call it practicing. I I never shut up. To be honest, if I'm, I don't think there's ever been a time in the last fifteen years where I've been silent for more than an hour unless I'm sleeping. <laughs> if if I'm not talking to somebody, I'm working on subharmonics or singing along to acapella music or just singing low notes just to annoy my parents because it, in the end it does annoy them and it's kind of funny. But, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I wouldn't say I practice at all. I just do it just consistently. Just kind of all in passing and just whatever you're doing throughout the day. Yep. Never, don't practice piano. Don't practice guitar. I just, I just pick it up. And if I decide I want to learn a new song, I'll do my best to learn it there. Yeah. And it takes a, a special kind of talent to be able to just kind of pick something up and do it. So yeah. definitely but to I be commended. I wouldn't suggest doing, I wouldn't suggest not practicing though. Because you want to, you want to be good. You want to be good (laughs) at your instrument. Yeah. Definitely want to take lessons if you can afford it. And if not, then try to learn on your own based off of videos and stuff. But there's, there's always tutorials on YouTube. Tutorials for everything. Always. They are of no cost to you. Of course. Most of the time. (laughs) Most of the time. What? Uh, okay, so do you do any warm ups prior to like recording or anything? Um, I wouldn't say prior to recording. Sometimes, whenever my dad goes on gigs, um, he he lets me perform. Uh, actually, I performed at a gig this past Saturday, and I spent about thirty minutes in the bathroom just running through scales and warming up my warming up my inhale and just making sure I was like, okay, I'm going to show off a little bit. I want to make sure I can do this. Yeah. So I ran through all my first octave stuff, worked on all my way up to the top of my range and just back down. Um, I try and avoid eating, eating foods or drinking sodas or anything about an hour before I record just to make sure I'm not, I don't have like the, coated throat or anything i can make sure i just get it done as soon as possible and not taking 25 takes yeah on something but yeah that's pretty much just how i warm up just sing it and then if i have to perform i'll just run scales and sirens and all that yeah and for those that are wannabe singers or are singing currently sirens are amazing for your voice oh yeah but don't overdo them just don't overdo it if you're at the top of your range, don't go any higher. Trust me. You might think that you're not doing a lot of damage to your voice, but in the end, if you continuously do it, it'll just keep adding on and adding on. And then someday you'll be dysphonic. And I was, I was dysphonic for a while. And then I was like, I think I know why. Cause I'm doing stuff that I'm not supposed to be doing. Yeah. And f- for, I don't have a good explanation of what dysphonia is, but in short, you you probably know it, what it means better than I do. So I'm gonna let have you a briefly idea. explain it. Um, don't quote me on this. Um, dysphonia. It's it's pretty much you you fucked up your voice. Yeah. You, you the things that you might be doing one day you can't do the next day. It's like it's like your vocal cords just gave up on you. Like you got really, really sick. And then like, it's like losing your voice for days on end. But that's, it's that's not really getting any better, I guess. Um, you Maybe. Can, some, some dysphonia is curable. I, I recently went through a little patch where I had dysphonia for a couple of days. I couldn't sing below like a D2 without struggling. But I, I cured that just by drinking a gallon of water a day. And I was, I was back to normal within a week. So, but if you, if you sense dystonia, stop and just drink water, go on vocal rest. If you're, if you're dysphonic, don't continue to be dysphonic Mm -hmm. because one day, yeah, it's not going to be, it's not going to be reversible someday. Yeah. You, you can't, irreversible dysphonia is bad. Mm -hmm. You will, 
your voice will feel eternally tired and you won't be able to do anything about it. Right. And then you may, you may end up visiting a ENT doctor at some point. Yeah. Um, Leonard Cohen and Tom Waits have really bad dysphonia. They, I think, I don't know what Leonard's Leonard Cohen's story is, but I think uh, it's just a legend according to my dad, but Tom Waits got diagnosed with some sort of throat cancer. And the doctors told him to stop singing, stop singing super, super high. And cause he used to be like the most angelic tenor ever. Yeah. But he would still go to bars late at night and he would do gigs and he would sing higher and higher every time. And then just one day his voice gave out. No, he sounds like this. And <laughs> that's not reversible at that point. Yeah. And he and at that point, he just sounds like he's doing throat bass, but throat bass all the yeah. time. It just sounds like a continuous growl. And it might sound cool, but it's not going to feel cool. And it's definitely not cool. Yeah. At the end of the day, I mean, it's I can't imagine not being able to sing, at least not yeah. like I, w- I used to be able to. At right. That point. Yeah. It's pretty. That's a pretty scary prospect. So I, I tried my yeah. try to my best to make sure I take care of my voice to prevent that. Of course. So lessons learned here. Don't push your high range like crazy and make sure you drink a lot of water if you plan to maintain your vocal health. Water is key. Tea water also helps. Um, also, sleep. Sleep. Yes. If you get the right amount of sleep, you can wake up with some good morning voice. Some really good morning voice. And you're also your voice will just if you don't get the proper sleep, your voice will not recover properly from being tired. Right. You're not going to feel like you're not going to feel rested vocally. Yeah, I can remember. I can remember being at a friend of mine's gig here in town, and I had been talking a lot and yelling a lot at this event. And when I got home, I could tell my voice was tired. It was strained. I made sure I downed some water. I did not sleep well that night at all. I don't recall the reason why, but I did not sleep very well that night. And I can tell you definitively, when I woke up the next morning, I had slept maybe three to four hours, tossed and turned most of the night. Woke up, my voice was still feeling really tense. Surprise, surprise. So... (laughs) Sleep is extremely important. Always. (laughs) Extremely important. And and, and more than just vocal health, too. Just get some sleep. In general. Like, like even for just overall well-being. Sleep. Sleep. And for, for those that do struggle with sleep, I can link you a podcast that I listen to that I, I used to have a crap ton of trouble sleeping. I can link that podcast in the description that I listened to. I don't know if anyone has ever heard of Andrew Huberman, but he is a neurobiologist. He's a neurobiologist over at Stanford and has a YouTube where he does all kinds of podcasts and videos on like general well-being and health. He has a few different ones on sleep, but there's one in particular that I listened to that changed my life. And I ever since I started following this like sleep routine that he advised on in this this podcast video i've just i've slept like a baby ever since and it's no it's no gimmicks either it's literally just like three or four things you can change in your real life and you're you're golden yeah so i'll link that in the description guys that was a bit of a tangent but in case anyone's having sleep trouble i'll link that for you but um Another tangent, but uh, here we go. All right, so uh, what are some of your record high and low chest notes? So this being your natural voice range. If we're going to go daily, here recently I've been pretty comfortable about, like, I personally consider belting chest. So I'd say maybe F4 to... G sharp one, G one, somewhere around there on the daily. But if, yeah, it's it's too much. But if we're gonna go record, um, I, my highest, my highest on tape recent chest note would be C sharp five, and that was Ooh, right. Yeah, after, that'd be right after I recorded a B flat four that I strained for an hour for. 
that was a stupid decision. That's where don't my do that, guys. Started. Yeah, don't yes. do that, guys. <laughs> yeah, but this is probably not going to help. The fact that we just said this the morning after, uh, I was on. I was playing video games with uh, Davi Day, and uh, he was like, "So, what's your lowest chest note right now?" And I just slid on down. I kept going, and I, I, I reached F, and I reached E, I reached D, and I was like, "How much can I? How much further can I keep going?" <laughs> and I eventually, I eventually just stopped on the C sharp one. That's because after that it went to C one, and I somehow got a small, small video, audio like audio clip to send to one of my friends. He keeps track of some of the <laughs> widest chest range. He, he keeps track of the chest ranges of a lot of singers. Yeah, and I sent him that, and he he confirmed that it was chest or it sounded like chest. So I'm number one on his list with a chest range, a record chest range of four or five octaves i can't remember which i'm not believe, good at, i'm not good at counting octaves i C believe it would be considered five. you're approaching five you're approaching yeah. five but it's, it's four it's like, and four and some change yeah four 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 and some change four flat and whatever to, so for 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 those that don't know for someone of this age to have this low of a chest range is unheard of absolutely unheard of this i mean it's there's ve- you can count on probably two hands the amount of people his age that have this low of a voice at his age because shout out to glenn miller to, yeah <laughs> yeah shout out to you buddy hope you're doing all right um but it is it is so incredibly rare that someone's voice drops this hard through puberty because like there are people, there are men in their sixties and seventies who still don't have this range. Yeah, and I'm I'm honestly jealous. I wish I was a tenor sometimes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or you but, know, even just a baritone. So, for those that don't know, um, the C sharp one that he was talking about, in, if this is indeed chest, which we'll t- we'll take his word for it, since I don't I don't have a way to obviously prove it at this time. But yeah, I'll show you we'll, this. We can, we'll say we that say it's D1. We'll D1. say D1 right now because I have a clear one on tape. So, yeah. So we'll do we'll do we'll say D1. So for those that don't know, a D1 is not that f- it's just a few steps away from being off of an 88 key piano, which is nuts. Yeah. And that's a natural chest. Like I can't I cannot achieve that at all. Far from it. My best it's note is a G very sharp. Weird thing. It's a very rare thing. It's more of like I recorded the D one on my birthday and I recorded the C sharp one uh maybe a month ago. It was it's a very rare thing to happen. Yeah. But if it's if it's not that and I'm having like a really low chest day, I might get down to an E if that's if that's okay. But normally just on a regular day, G one is usually where I bottom out. <clears throat> Maybe an, may, I might have a week where I get an F every day if I'm lucky. But yeah, but other than that, that's where I bottom out. So, I mean, for those that don't know, a D1 is um, right around here. The... That right there is not normal for someone his age to be producing out of a natural chest range. <laughs> Yeah. I'm just lucky. Well, I mean, genetics play a factor, I guess. Yeah. My dad did have a fairly deep voice. So I think I got a lot of that from him. Yeah. So um, moving along to our next question we have here. So um, who are some of your personal favorite artists or friends that you have collaborated with on in music? Um, that's a good one. I think some of my well, musician musicians in general. Wow, I did not say that word. Um, musicians, I singers think, in general. Yeah, yeah. I, f- I feel like Jacob Collier and you know just all the acapella bases in general are some of the more influential figures in my life. They produce good music. It's usually stuff I sing on the daily. So I, I feel like that would be a good 
a good answer for that one. But in terms of people I've collaborated with, mm-hmm. uh, I would definitely have to say uh, Davide Del Monte, uh, Torin Clark, uh, what's his name? Nelson, uh, Cortland James. Uh, yeah, I'd say so far, those are some of my favorite people I've collabed with. And I've got a collab coming out in a couple months with some smaller creators and they're, they're really, really nice people. And they, they're, they're older than me. So they know a lot of life lessons that I don't know. And even if we're not talking about music, we're usually talking about like personal stuff or talking about mental health and how to balance life and music and TikTok and all of that. So those are, I feel like people I'm collaborating with are really, really, really good friends of mine that I, I would honestly just consider some of my best friends. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So who are some people that you would like to collaborate with in the future? Um, definitely, definitely the bass gang. Um, that's, that's a given. Uh, Luke, T- Luke Taylor would be incredible. Um, the Wellerman in general, that'd be awesome. Uh, I've always wanted to do a collab with Casper Fox. We're making that happen. Um, let's go. Yeah, uh, I'm ready for it. But just in terms of people I've wanted to collaborate with, just all my bigger follow, all my bigger followers and following just yeah anybody that does music i I like i always want to try and do a little collab with you know even if it's just a short little 30 second barbershop tag or if it's a full five minute long song just yeah yeah just i like collaborating with people partly because i'm lazy and i don't like singing all the parts too it just gives me a chance to you know it gives me a chance to get my name out there and be able to talk to people yeah Definitely in the same yeah. boat here. I love doing the same thing. Well, I'm, I wouldn't say that I'm like lazy. It's just, it's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of work. But usually I end up arranging it. So I end up singing all the parts anyways, but at least I won't have to like get it incredibly, incredibly good, you know, yeah. to post. I can, I can leave that up to the other people to struggle with, but yeah. yeah. Might have yeah. to line something up between us two in the future. Definitely. You heard it here first, folks. You did. You can, you can quote me on that one. Mm-hmm. We'll make it happen. Just keep we'll an eye happen. out for it. Of course. All right. So, um, what are some of your favorite moments in music with other people? Like just like, just in general, like music career people that some moments that you've had with people in the music career? Um, me and Dobby Day. Our, Dobby Day posted a video back when it was early, early sometime last year. It was back when Cheryl Porter, Cheryl, Cheryl Porter, I think was her name, uh, her vocal warm up thing, like the Me May Mama Moo thing. And I duetted Dobby Day because he did it just like really low, but I sang yeah. it a fifth above and it blew up. And everybody loved it and there's this one music creator his name is swerve and he's created some of the most popular funk songs like in the world like he's got 20 30 million monthly listeners on spotify he took he took our video and he made a funk remix out of it i feel like (laughs) i feel like that was just peak musicianship right there yeah that that's when my life was complete I have not heard this, and I need you to send this to me off camera ASAP. I got you. I got you. There's a this couple. Is, this is going to be incredible. It's so, funny. for those that don't know what funk is, um, I don't know how to describe it, but it is a new kind of genre of music that's kind of come out of the ashes, if you will, come out of the woodwork. Yeah, it's it's primarily ba- like bass focused, but you, you you always have the heavy heavy bass but then the melody usually consists of a normal melody with a fifth above it so if like the melody was like it's not but if the melody was is for example a gab 
there would also be a DEF stacked on top of it, or a DEF sharp stacked on top of it. And the 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 melodies and harmonies are usually not very complicated either. No, it's they're honestly all catchy. It's, they're just it's usually they're just made songs. to be catchy. Yeah. yeah. Usually those songs that you would see in you know people drifting cars on drift tracks or people posting when they show off their physique on TikTok, just the heavy bass music is mm-hmm. probably be the best way to describe it. He, yeah. Moder moderistic uh what's it called? Moderistic EDM would probably be a good way to put it. Yeah, yeah. Like more modern EDM. It's kinda like yeah. I guess like a lower house in a way. Yeah. Lower lo- lower lying house music, I guess. Yeah, a sub a sub part of it. Yeah, I guess. All right, so um, quick, one more question, and then we'll have a, a bit of a divider section, a little bit of a break. So um, okay. do you have any tips, tricks, or life hacks that for anyone that is currently singing or wants to sing? Um, I feel like if you're going to get into singing, you need to figure out what kind of like voice type you are first before you start you know, getting your hopes up and you know, start practicing warm-ups for the wrong vocal range like uh jeff castellucci said one time if you sound like ariana grande and you want to sound like barry white for example it or might J- not james be in the earl cards. Jones. yeah james earl jones that's what he said yeah uh yeah it, it's not going to be in the cards for you mm-hmm. but you can always try and work your way down just don't force it you want it. vocal range isn't everything because, you know, I, I, like I said, I have the C-sharp 5 chest, but it doesn't mean it sounded good. You want, right. you want to be able to sound good, but, you know, just the vocal, vocal range is just, you know, a little side quest. It's a perk. You, mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if you have just an, a one octave range. If you know how to use it and you can control it with 100%, you know, just control, that's all that matters. As long as you know how to use your vocal range and you know how to be good with it, that's all that matters. Just Absolutely. you got to figure out, you just got to figure out what kind of voice you are before you start warming up and practicing all there. Once you understand your voice type and what kind of yeah. voice you have, it doesn't matter so much exactly what voice type you have because most people can sing most songs most of the time yeah right because you can you can do a little bit of it you can do a little bit of everything obviously but obviously each voice type will have their own niche the one thing that they're good at yeah you know baritones are usually used in jazz or country music tenors are usually used in operas along with sopranos you know Mm -hmm. you got you just got different jobs for different vocal types yep it's not to say you can't do something or can do something. It's just, yeah. it's just, this is what you're best at. This yeah, is where your testatory you lies. Best. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So once you understand it, it doesn't define you, but it gives you an idea of where you sit. Exactly. Okie doke. So this will give us a small little section to kind of like this kind of divides, like this is over halfway. So at this point, yeah. we're um, going to give you some time to advertise, self-promote, anything you've got going on in your musical musical career, um, anything you got going on as far as covers, merch, anything like that. Share what you got going on for the next little bit, and then we'll move on after that. All right. Well, um, a lot of people don't know this, but after I hit 100,000 followers, I, I released an album in celebration of it it's a full cover album and it's out on spotify it's just my uh tiktok name which is acoustics underscore bass and i i believe the album was called my best mistake ever uh it was i got i don't want to get too too personal and sound like a pick me i got broken up with a little bit before i hit a hundred thousand followers and it's pretty much just a bunch of songs that I use to help get through the breakup and a bunch of songs I listened to that made me like feel better. So, and there's a couple, there's like one song it's called a, it's called drowning. And, uh, I made it because I post, I posted a video of me doing it because of the whole ocean gate, Mm -hmm. uh, situation. So that's pretty much just a joke. Um, 
that that one has nothing to do with the breakup that one was just me being funny yeah uh yeah but the rest of the songs on there there's a couple childhood favorites there's a couple personal today favorites even though i'm not sad um it's it's all it's all kind of mellow music i I tried to be a little rangy with it i didn't want to you know be too bassy with it but yeah i've got i got a whole spotify album out um again tiktok name just acoustics underscore bass and i'm hoping actually no it's out on more than just spotify it's out on pretty much anywhere i believe i I think even i think it's even on instagram sounds i think i I don't remember where all i released it to but you can pretty much find it anywhere you do yeah yeah, and all of his all information will be in the description below, as I do with all my guests. His TikTok, social medias that he's willing to share, it's all going to be in the description down below. Of course. So for, um, if you are done with the <coughs> self-promo section, we are going to move into this next section where you have the opportunity to ask me any questions should you have any for me. So you have the floor for that for the next little bit, too. Okay. What inspired you to start doing podcasts with singers so it in short um it usually goes into a bit of a tangent and it kind of takes a little bit but in short i would have to say just my true like my desire for people to gain a better understanding of and appreciation for the music that they like to listen to um and I like to do that through people getting to know the artists that they listen to. And this is something that I've, I've recently, very recently, well, actually, so we're approaching a year uh, in about a month. We're approaching a year's worth of content at this point. So almost a year on the channel. Um, but about a year ago, thank you, uh, about a year ago, so... It was it was completely spontaneous, but I was like, I want to personally get my foot in the door in the music industry, but not just to do my own music. I want to be able to interact with other singers, befriend them, share their story with other people and just help their help their audiences understand that them as an artist so that way they can listen to their music and have even more meaning to it. Or me- even more meaning behind listening to it than they had before and just help right. them gain a better appreciation of that artist. And I was like, well, how do I do that? And it, it hit me like a light bulb. I was like, podcast. Yeah. Get inter- I, get I remember that. I, I remember when you first, I remember when you first started and mm-hmm. I, I remember, I remember being like one of the first 15 people in the, uh, the discord server. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I was one of the first 15 people. Um, it was honestly, I, I, it was, it was amazing watching you grow from like 10 followers to what are you at now? 2.97,000. Yeah, we're, like we're very, we're just shy of 3000. So we're looking at 2980 roughly. And yeah. we're, we're coming, we're closing in on 3000 right now. Yeah. And I, I feel like watching you grow is honestly amazing. I'm proud of you for it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Now it's, it's really humbling for sure. Of course. You always got to stay humble. Always. Um, out of, the 17, this is the 17th episodes of the vocast that you've done. Who would you say your all time favorite would be? And you don't have to say me. I know I'm pretty good, but. <laughs> so, oh, this is a hard question. Oh, it's going to be difficult for me to pick an actual personal favorite, but I would have to say, let me see if I can pick a similar criteria so personal favorites um someone that i was really looking for i will say let's say this someone that i was looking forward to getting on the most i would have to say either as at this point in time at least it would have been either elliot robinson or bobby bass it was super, super cool to be able to get in touch with them both and have them on in separate episodes of the vocast. And 
that those two were probably the ones I was looking forward to the most. Not that I wasn't looking forward to looking forward to my other guests, but no, 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 no. that's cool. I mean, those two would probably be the two that I was looking forward to having on the most up until this point, at least. Yeah, I, I feel like um, you know getting the bigger names, like especially with Luke Taylor and Glenn Miller and all of that, like really helped grow your channel and help bring attention because they're like. Well, that, that that has Luke Taylor in it, or that has Bobby Bass in it. Oh, cool! Let me go watch that. Yeah, it's surprising. I and the and the cool thing is too. So for those that don't know, in case it wasn't obvious, I don't do this for clout. I don't I don't use other people. I don't use my guests to get clout. I don't chase it. So with that caveat and or with that catch in mind, I, I don't I don't do that. But yeah, it's. It's interesting to watch the it's interesting to see how many people gravitate towards content involving the people that they like to listen to. It's cool to see how many of the loyal listeners, loyal followers follow where their artist leads. So like if they pop up on a podcast and you got several hundred extra views and like, huh, those could those are very likely to be some loyal people in that person's audience. It's yeah, pretty it's cool to see. Typically, how the you that's I think that's how the YouTube algorithm works. If you uh, or just any algorithm in general, if you watch enough of one certain person, you'll get like reaction videos or just advertisements with the person in them, or mm -hmm. in this case, podcasts. Um, yeah, and I feel like that. I feel like the YouTube algorithm is helping with that, especially putting that on other people's for you pages and recommended and all that. Yeah, it is. And some of the videos I've had recently have been pushed by the algorithm pretty hard to people who follow the reaction and podcast space. I've seen I've seen a lot of like viewers from uh, in my analytics that have come from um, like what like watch page and recommended and stuff like that. And I'm like, the, the algorithm is actually pushing my content pretty hard. It looks like. Yeah. Uh, and it's really maybe cool. yeah and i know someday that you're gonna i know someday you're gonna get extremely extremely popular but uh, i know it i know for a fact honestly just based on what i know with the algorithm and just the quality of your content you're gonna blow up you're gonna have your breakthrough i hope so at some point <laughs> hey at the end of the day too guys again this is another thing to stay humble i at the end of the day i'm not here to blow up but if i do blow up I'm not going to complain because being able, y'all don't understand, to be able to live off of doing something that I love doing as much as YouTube, it would be the greatest honor and blessing that I could ever possibly have in my life, 100%. Yeah. To be able to truly live off of doing something that I love and being able to do it more or less when I want to. The idea of that is just mind blowing to me. And the fact that I'm already able to monetize my content is crazy to me. So, I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's super humbling and I can't wait to see where the channel goes. Right. So thank you guys so much for everything. <laughs> um, hmm. I want to, I want to give you one more question. I just got to think of what that is. Go for it. Well, what? Hmm. Is there anything significant in your childhood that led you in the path of music? Hmm. Or maybe not just childhood and life in general. So there's one thing that my dad said to me, and I, and I, I say this in a lot of my podcasts, but I, I, I can't really hammer home the point enough is that my dad, when he said this one thing to me, it, it didn't really click to me until like right around the time that I started the YouTube channel, but better late than never, right? Yeah. So something that he said to me, I believe when I was around anywhere from seven to nine, it was I was somewhere around that age. Um, he went to pick up the guitar and he wanted to show me how to play it. And um I was just haphazardly throwing myself at it. Like I wasn't even really trying and I didn't really care much about it at the time. And 
bless my dad for for being as patient with me as uh, as I was. You are a saint, Dad. If you watch my videos, love you very much. Um, oh. he is he he. This sticks with me now. But what he said to me when we were looking through guitar, like he would show me, he would spend fifteen minutes showing me something. And then I would go in there and just like, blah, 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 not pay attention. And then I would go and do what he was showing me, seemingly with little effort. And he looked at me and he said, son, you have the ear for it. You're just not doing anything with it. And that didn't really hit a nerve with me until right around the time that the YouTube channel came up. And that resonated with me when I got to thinking about it. I was like, you you have the ear for it, but you're not doing anything with it. Why? And, and that's where you got the idea from start, start a podcast? That's that's the that's the uh I would say the more mushy reason as to why I did it. I was like, I got to thinking and in my brain, I was like why am I not doing anything with this? If I have, if I have perfect pitch, if I can pick up a guitar and just start playing, if I have a voice that I can sing, why am I not doing anything with it? Uh, not that, right. not as many people can be, are, are fortunate enough to say that they are, they have the same musical talent that I do. And I, I'm not bragging guys. I'm really not. But what I'm saying is like, I, it was untapped potential. I had no idea. And it, it really resonated with me. That thing that he said when I was right around that age, it took a long time for me to register that in my brain, but better late than never, I guess. <laughs> right. And and with that, does that mean you're going to be coming out with any original music or any covers? Very good question. So for those that don't know, there I did um, start work on a project several months ago. I am working on a acapella cover of a very famous song from a I'm trying not to give away too much detail a very famous song from a recent movie that has um, characters from DC in it I'll let y'all you take wild stabs at it but wow you made me you just really made me feel like I live under a rock because I can't even think of any superhero movie that just came out it's it, well it's got dc characters and it re references dc characters oh still got no idea i will probably tell you off camera but um guys for those that don't know i actually have it in progress and it's been temporarily on hold but i will be resuming progress on it soon so stay tuned for that um all that aside though um i do have one song that i'm working on like i just mentioned um I don't really do that much original content at this point in time, at least. I just kind of juggle everything with the YouTube channel. Um, I do like to do occasional TikTok duets. I've sent you a couple in the past. I'm sure you've seen. Yes. Um, I like to do bass duets um, on TikTok, and I also like to do uh, vocal percussion every once in a while. I, am ter I, I, I tell people I'm terrible at it. People tell me I'm not. I'm still convinced that I'm terrible at vocal perk. But vocal perk, is, vocal perk is so much fun for me. It's, that's it's very fun. Favorites. It's very fun. It just takes a lot of practice. I've been doing beatboxing, vocal, whoa, vocal percussion since maybe fourth grade. I am nowhere near good. That's what I like to think. I, I, I think I'm good. Then I'm like, I'm like, no, I'm not that good. Trust I, me. I think you're pretty good. <laughs> oh well, well i mean that's a knee slapper but um but all that aside though um as far as like original content is concerned the, on the only things really close to original that i do are probably the tiktok duets i do have the one cover that i'm working on but that's really it i eventually plan to release more but it just kind of depends on where i can work it in because i've got so many podcasts that i'm working on trying to get in touch with more guests. Then I've got more video reaction videos. I'm trying to juggle because I've got an audience there that I'm trying to cater to as well. Right. So, you know, just whenever I can, but it's kind of like, you know, juggling multiple, um, balls at once, if you will. Yeah. 
Well, you've already, I know some, I know one guy you've interviewed, uh, he could definitely help with the production of that, uh, Manav. He, I, 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 I don't know if he has like a full-time job or if mixing and mastering music is his full-time job, but he, he's going to be mastering and mixing the acapella collab that I mentioned earlier. Um, and his, his rates are fairly, fairly cheap too. Yes, they are. Um, very good deals. I did very briefly discuss things like this with him before. And, and and we've also seen in his original work, his handiwork in mixing, like it's incredible. Oh, yeah. And of course, he's just a great singer in general with or without yeah. mixing. Yeah. Excellent guy. Very, very smart. Very smart. Very, very fit. Um, he's just all, he's all around a good dude. Definitely. He is definitely somebody you'd be happy to be friends with. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Blessed to know you, my friend Monof, if you're watching. But um, yeah, love you, um, love you, buddy. So we're, but yeah, he's uh, he's a, he's definitely going to be a good resource for me in the future. I know that for a fact. Of course. Yeah, had, had to get the little uh, plug in for him there. Get him Absolutely. a little, get him a little bit more business. Absolutely. Anything else you got for me? Um, in terms of questions, I think that's about it. Sweet. So we will move on to the next little section where we have a small sprint of questions that I'm going to hammer you with, and then we'll wrap this thing up. So, Sounds good. um, what are your thoughts on extended techniques in singing? So obviously you, you use extended techniques on a pretty regular basis, but as a general, yeah. like blanket statement, what are your thoughts on extended techniques in music? I think I encourage them. I, I would be lying if I said, if I, I would be lying if I told you I don't use extended techniques live. They have saved my life so many times and people love it. It doesn't matter if they're sober or if they're drunk, especially if it, 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 it helps if they're drunk. People love <laughs> low notes. Just it's, it's something that they don't hear often, especially coming from, you know, younger people someone hitting an e1 live is just crazy to them yes it is so you know and just being able to have access to that is just absolutely something i would encourage and if you don't know any and any extended techniques i would suggest learning subharmonics first because i feel like i feel like those are probably easier to learn than something like inhale or whistles or you know something along those lines yeah, or it was it was just that way for me personally. Everybody's different, but make sure that um, just a catch here, though, guys. Make sure you don't spend more time learning these extended techniques than you yeah. do training your natural voice. You're not you some. You're gonna have days where you're not gonna have any extended techniques. Like right now, I probably wouldn't be able to hit a subharmonic if I if I even tried. But I'm always gonna have you know the chest. So. And all, all extended techniques are built off of chest. That's why they're called extended. They're not called different techniques. They're called extended. They extend off of your chest range. So exactly. that's what you need to take care of the most. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so um, what extended techniques are you capable of using or use on a regular basis? Um, subharmonics. I, I use those a lot. Growl. That's mainly just to sneak up behind people and scare them. <laughs> Inhale. I, that's if I have to hit anything lower than a C2 live, auto, that's my go-to inhale. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't really have many higher singing techniques. I mean, I have my inhale whistle notes. I, I can hardly do normal whistle notes. Inhale whistle notes are just more comfortable for me. Yeah. Um, but of course I've got like the, the occasional like throat, weird throat singing thing I can do. Mm -hmm. Um, that's, that's very, very rare. And I don't, I don't try and do it cause it hurts my throat after a while. Yeah. Yeah. That's about, that's about all the extended techniques I, I can probably do. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting my subs, my sub harmonics are starting to get better at that. That's once I get them refined and can access them most of the time, I'll start using them more often. 
but my preferred extended technique for anything below a C2 is also uh, ingressive phonation, aka inhale. Yeah. And it's it's really easy to 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 it's really easy to access and do. But yeah, it's just learning how to initiate it at first. That's the hard part. Once you once you get that first little note, then you're like, oh, it was that simple. And then you you pretty much just learn from there. And but the catch with inhale bass is maintaining pitch and breath yeah. support. It is incredibly difficult. Yeah. It's it's like reverse singing. You typically you would take a deep breath before you hit a low note. But if you're doing inhale, you have to deep, you have to like, <sighs> exhale have to really exhale. deeply. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have to learn how to, you know, talk with it and all that and how to maintain pitch. And you know And also the the specific consonants and the S's and T's and D's where your P's. P's and where your tongue touches the top of your mouth. If you're going to sing with if you're going to phonate and use lyrics and words with inhale bass you have to be really careful otherwise it'll just sound like yeah exactly i found it easier like if i'm having to like 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 on saturday uh the line was i was singing pulse in prison it was blow my blues away you it's in my mind, I try and kind of sing it with a country accent because, you know, country accents don't focus so much on certain vowels and consonants and all that. So mm-hmm. if you can sing it kind of like that, you can get away with it without it yeah. sounding, you know, without it sounding unnatural. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. But yeah. that's a bit of a tangent on uh, inhale bass singing there, guys. A bit of a, yeah. that's kind of how that works in a nutshell. Yeah. All right. So, a couple more things, and then we wrap this thing up. So, do you have perfect pitch? I do have perfect pitch. You do. Interesting. I do. That's a very rare thing to have. I got really lucky with it. Actually, my band director was the one that discovered it for me because he he was he was singing one of my French horn lines in a different key, and I was like, "That's not in the key of F. That's in the key of D flat." He's like, "How do you know that?" I was like, "I don't know." <laughs> I just, I just do. I didn't know the key. I took a guess on that. I just knew it wasn't the right key. (laughs) I will say though, it's, it's really crazy because, um, I don't know if you've ever seen, seen her speak, but, um, Haley, I, um, she's in my discord server. She was there from the very beginning. Um, she doesn't really talk in there now, but I actually went to school with her and she was the one that helped me figure out that I had perfect pitch. And I've I've seen her name float around the server a couple times. But. Yeah, but um, she was the one that helped me discover that I had perfect pitch, and I was like, I I think she's saying we were just hanging out in the band room one day, and I just looked, I was just like, she was playing her clarinet, you know, and I'm just like, hey, what's up? And you know, got talking for a minute, and then uh, I was like, oh, that was a that was a nice D flat, and she was like, what? What? Wait, wait, wait! What was that? Did we, what what note was that? I was like, that was a D flat. She was like, okay, well, what what's this note? She plays, um, she plays an A, and then I'm like, that's an A, and she was like, yeah. wait a minute, well, what's what's this note? And she plays a C sharp, and I'm like, that's C sharp. She's like, oh my god, you have perfect pitch, and I'm like, what's that? <laughs> But uh, yeah, prop, props to you on that, but props to her because um, clarinets are in a different key than concert than concert tuning. Mm-hmm. So you you were probably you were I'm assuming reading the notes off in concert. Yes, in the C in the key of C. If yeah. I'm not mistaken, I think clarinets are in the key of B flat. I believe I, I might be so. Wrong. But she she does she does read off of she reads off of both, and she she was like, yeah, you know, this is how you do, but. She she read off of, or I mean, she knew what I was saying, and you know, and yeah. she was like, "Yeah, that's totally right." And I'm like, "So you mean to tell me I have perfect pitch?" <laughs> I don't yeah, know what I that the, is, but it sounds cool. I had the same reaction. I was like, "Perfect pitch! Wow, is, what is that? that? What is that? That sounds really cool. I'm intrigued." Yeah, I want to learn more about this. Yeah, but, and for yeah. those that don't know what perfect pitch is, it's the ability to 
name or sing or perform a specific note on command. Yeah. Instantly, pretty much. Or, or if you get really good with it, you can you can do whole chords. I think the most complex chord I've ever that like ever perfect pitched pitchified. Um it was it was some weird Gregorian chord on the piano, but it had like a G, a B flat, a D, an F sharp, and a bunch of weird other notes, and I only got like two wrong, and that was because I just missed them. Yeah. But yeah, but you perfect pitch is definitely something that you can get better with because if you, you can, can if you, you can, can get better with it, yeah. Yeah. If you can get better with perfect pitch, you can you can learn any song. Pretty much. Yeah. That's all that's all it takes. Yeah. Now, for those that don't know, to give you a bit of a caveat, so perfect pitches, um, the way it was explained to me is that it is a gift, but it can be a gift or it's a gift that is honed. Um, yeah. Otherwise, there are other people that have relative pitch. And that is according to what I've been told by a music expert by the name of Peter Barber. Uh, that is something that is learned and People can have a good ear for it. They just have to train for it, and they can yeah. usually get it right. It just takes them a little bit longer. Yeah, it's and, it usually. Sorry. No, no, you're fine. Yeah, go ahead. Um, usually, the way you learn, way most people learn it is they memorize, you know, the middle C on the piano, and then from there they will just learn how to land on that note, and then they'll hear the note. They'll hear a different note if they're trying to figure it out. And then they'll either sing up or down the scale. So they'll just like say someone's singing a G3. I mm -hmm. hit the C4. Mm -hmm. C, B, B flat, A, G sharp, G. Yep. There's your, G, there's your G. You found it. Yep. That's a, pretty much exactly how relative pitch does. They'll usually walk up or down to find it if they're pretty close. If they didn't get it, they'll, they'll walk up or down just a little. They're usually pretty close. Yeah. But usually then, of course, you close. have... You have those extremely, extremely good musicians that just teach themselves and give themselves perfect pitch. Yeah. Like, that's, that's very rare. Yeah, it's extremely rare. It's like it's even more rare than having perfect pitch in the first place is teaching right. yourself perfect pitch. It's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. I can tell you right now that I, I, I wasn't taught it. I, I I was just I guess I just kind of naturally had the ear for it I guess but uh, I had to learn how to use the perfect pitch I knew I had it I just didn't know because I, I started listening to bass singing when I was playing French horn and French horns are in the key of F mm -hmm. so um I think a, and for a D on a French horn is a G in concert tuning so I had to learn yeah, how to correct. yeah I had to learn how to switch that. And then make my brain, you know, primarily read in concert tuning. Yeah. So, yeah. But once I got that, it was a piece of cake. Yeah. So, I mean, so for those that don't know, in, in, in short, the ability to do the following. So, um, throw a random note my way, but you don't, you don't have to add an, uh, a number on there. Just throw a random note my way. Name an Aaron. A flat. Yeah. C short. B flat. There we go. A half flat. A half flat. Mm -hmm. Somewhere pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. In between there. Sort I of about it. Yeah, I tried teaching myself a little bit how to sing, like halfway out of tune. It's that's how my piano's tuned. I I don't sing in four forty. I sing in four thirty two hertz. Oh yeah, four thirty two. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. Sometimes I like the way four thirty two sounds on in some songs for sure. Yeah, but yeah, all the all the perfect pitch nerdiness aside. Um, we got two more questions and then we'll wrap this up. So what is one of your favorite things about being a singer? Um, I think just the fact that I'm able to do really well on karaoke nights. Um, <laughs> uh, 
uh, one of the best things I love, and I did this last year at, at a screams, which is like a Halloween amusement park kind of thing. Uh, they had a karaoke, they had a karaoke stand, and I was like, give me your man by Josh Turner. And so I walked up there and I was like, speaking like this to the microphone to throw people off. <laughs> and, and then the music started, I was like, baby, lock the doors and turn the light. And everybody loved it. It was so fun. So that's um, really cool. So, it, like, to make it to shorten things up, um, the reactions. React, is- I love reactions. I have to agree. That's a that's a really cool that's a really cool thing about being a singer. Yeah, it's one of those things I can remember a year and so laugh on. Yeah, it's the best. It's the best. One more question and we'll wrap this up. So All if right. you could steal a fellow singer or any singer's voice alive or passed away, whose would it be and why? Eric Holloway. I, I I think it's pretty self-explanatory, but I mean, in case yeah. it, in case in case you don't know who Eric Holloway is, he is. I, I a lot of people would classify him as a basso profundo, but for simpleness' sake, we're going to call him a really low bass. Um, he's also a voice actor, but he's got an amazing, amazing higher range. Uh, his highest chest note is a B four, and coming from. And that coming from somebody who speaks at a really loud and resonant G1 mm-hmm. is actually incredible. And I would, I would kill to sound like him because, um, you know, I, I say I have the G1 daily, but it doesn't mean I have it all day. Yeah. Um, but just to be able to speak at it would be absolutely insane. And just his tone and clarity and resonance and power and just the fear his voice strikes into me would mm-hmm. be just amazing because he's a, he's an incredible musician absolutely absolutely. He's, absolutely he's got a good sense of humor too good to hear been trying to line up a, a time to get him on but things haven't worked out yet hopefully we'll be able to work something out soon yep still waiting on a response from him yeah all right folks well that's gonna wrap up the podcast for us today we are currently sitting at a little over an hour and a half, which is pretty good timing. It's about where we usually end up. So folks, like I said, if you are enjoying the content, make sure you drop a like, thumbs up, hit a comment down below, even if it's just a smiley face. Helps the algorithm. Subscribe, hit the bell, make sure you're notified every time I post another video. Hit the Patreon link down below in the description if you're interested in supporting the channel in a bigger way than just a subscription, like, or comment. Jordan, we appreciate you coming on and hanging out with us today and sharing your music story. And I hope you guys I hope you guys have gained a better understanding of why he does what he does and his passion and his journey and his vision moving forward in his ventures. So guys, that's Ethan Drew on the Vocast. That's going to wrap up for today. We love you. Take care of yourselves and we will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.